low internet. I am Cheap Gravity, and this is episode three of this modded Minecraft adventure. We need some power. We don't have a ton. In fact, we have none. We need some power for pretty much everything we are gonna do from here on out. I'm also standing on another thing. What is this thing? This thing is our new wall. It is our wall of tasks, our wall of goals. We are gonna start locking in some decisions. And first things first, our. How are we gonna get power? Well, we need some osmium, some redstone, some iron, because we're gonna be getting into mechanism. Once we get some power, we are going to use it for, first and foremost, a jetpack. We wanna be able to start traveling much greater distances, much faster and much more efficiently, and we can do that with a jetpack. One of the things the jetpack is gonna help us find, productive bees. We need regular bees, which are just found in the world, but they can be turned, oh, recourses? Look how I spelled that. Actually, no, we'll leave it. This is about locking in things, so we're gonna lock in our mistake. I see you, mistake. With our recourses. You know, I can't do that, that's horrible. Productive bees will give us all kinds of resources that we can use to feed back into our mechanism and down into pretty much everything else. These resources are not just regular vanilla game resources, they are also all of the mod resources. Like Osmium is only used in mechanism, but there's an Osmium bee. The sooner we get bees, the better. We also want power for something else called simulation. Basically, we go out, we find mobs, we kill enough of them, we get some data, we can put that data in a computer, and it'll simulate those mobs' resources for us. Because we want, that's right, more resources. This can be blaze rods, ender pearls, leather, meat. So this will get us all kinds of ores and materials over here, and this will give us all kinds of mob parts over here. This all starts with some power. It's getting dark though. Let's go to sleep, let's get some osmium, and let's start. I've made a few changes to the base before we uh, leave it one more time. I finally filled in our windows with some nice white stained glass. I've also made these bonsai pots. I started a little tree farm in my backyard, but these pots are much better at a tree farm than an actual tree farm. It's made with five bricks in a U shape like this. You also need a piece of dirt for it and a sapling of your choice. We'll just use one oak. The bonsai pot goes down, the dirt goes in it, sapling goes on top. Right click on the bonsai pot, it'll fill up all the way and then it's ready to be harvested. We can click to cut and it's gonna chop the tree down. Now it doesn't do it every time, but any resources it gets, it's gonna put it over here. It gives us one oak lock. I said it's better at being a tree farm than an actual tree farm, but we're not getting a ton of resources here. That's because this, this can be automated with a simple redstone clock. I have a decent amount of wood, so I don't need to set up the automated clock, but I do want to show you guys this. It's a great space saver, if nothing else. I also did finish connecting all of our tom. There's nothing here because these chests are empty. For now, we still have plenty of room in our storage, and that's about it on the home front. Let's go mining for some osmium. This cave network is vast. Oof, nice. Right, I have two torches left. I think it's time to head back home. We made it back up, yay. We found our osmium. We can now combine it with our ore hammer, give us raw osmium, which we already have enough of, but the one raw osmium will turn into two osmium dust, which will give us two ingots. Duplicate everything we can. While our osmium is smelting, we can do something. Our storage is already full. Do you see? I want to put this in here. I, I can't really put this in here, which means I would want to connect up more chests, but I need these inventory cable connectors that we made last episode, which needs an ender pearl, which I don't have. These chests Chests are only a double chest. There are two different chest mods that we can consider when it comes to expanding our chest storage. There is iron chests restock. There are more layers to these and there are upgrades to these chests that we can apply. And these chests can be upgraded on the spot. So if we make one of these and we plop it down, it has one extra row from being a regular chest in this single chest format. But it has these upgrade modules. We can make a few of these blank ones and then we will make this copper to iron upgrade. Crouch and right clicking will upgrade this chest and keep the contents of the inventory inside. So now this iron chest is a double chest. Guess what though? We can keep going. Of course we can. We can make it a gold chest and get extra, even more awesome storage. And this can happen a few more times with a diamond chest upgrade. Look at that. Look at those boxes. Look at how much more stuff that is than this. 
The other option for chests is called sophisticated storage, and their upgrade paths work similarly. So if we make one of their chests and place it down, this has an upgrade slot, and they do have their own upgrade modules, which means we can take this and we can put it on. It will do the same thing. We can also do this all the way up to diamond, and it holds a tremendous amount of things as well. If we consider our options, functionality-wise, they're pretty much tied. They work essentially the same way. The iron chest at a diamond level is a 12 by 6 chest, which is 72 items. The sophisticated chest at diamond level is a 12 by 9 area, which is 108 items. However, to get this diamond chest, you only need two diamond because to make this upgrade requires gold and diamonds. To make this upgrade requires way more more diamonds. So you have to ask yourself, is 36 extra slots in storage worth six more diamonds to you? If you would, go with sophisticated chests. If that deal sounds like not a good deal, go with iron chests. I am gonna go with iron chests here because right now we're resource short. Cool thing is we didn't waste these. These can just be picked up and they can be used right here in these inventories. Now we can remove the chest. We can place our single diamond chest. We can put our things back in the inventory, like we see our eccentric tome. We can make sure it's still there. There it is, there we go. But you just replaced the chests out and gained so much more room. One cool thing about using the iron chests is that if we just remove one half of these chests, right? This is still that original chest. I've just removed one half of it. We can make some of these vanilla to copper chest upgrades and it will just, it'll just start our upgrade path. We right click, boom, now we've got a copper chest. Already gonna start holding more things. I'm gonna do this while uh, my osmium it smelts, it's, it's done, it's done smelting. We are still going to make this transformation happen as best we can like this. Well, it's a little messy, but it's way more functional, right? I mean, that's that's the plan, that's the goal. I did find some things in our inventory. I've either made them off camera or found them all together. We got this cloud in a bottle allows us to double jump. Let's put it on our belt. We also have a villager's hat. We could wear this on our head. A uh, little diamond villager's hat, ain't that pretty. If we get any more wandering traders, this will decrease the trading price. I've also got a clock because one of my favorite blocks is the clock block. Gotta be really careful how you say that. The clock block. It is what it says it is. It's just, it's just a little clock. I think it'd be quite cool for us to see our, you know, the little, the little time of day. There's 20 minutes in the day, but it's just a great little way to see what our time is. This is kind of our inventory office area, so it, it fits, right? Also found this upgrade base. We want to use it for a food upgrade, a feeding upgrade, but we don't have any ender pearls, but I will put it on the wall. Anyway, osmium's done. The easiest way to start making power is with this, the heat generator. Wind generators are also a great way. They're a little more expensive. So we'll go ahead and we'll add both of these and we'll craft up the heat generators first. We also need a metallurgic infuser, a couple of them. We'll add them to the list as well. We're gonna want one of these energized smelters also and an enrichment chamber. We're gonna also need some cables. Once we get one metallurgic infuser, we can fill it with some coal, put some iron in it, it'll turn into enriched iron, which can go back into the metallurgic infuser, turn into steel dust, which can then be blasted down into steel. We can also make steel dust with some iron dust and an ore hammer. We are gonna make two of these, that's all we need to get started real quick. We will let these smell up. We also wanna make ourselves one of these basic fluid tanks. Craft it up right now. And with our two pieces of steel, we can make some basic cables. This will be a great place for us to start. Let's make our heat generator. We're also gonna make one metallurgic infuser. Although not a part of mechanism, we do wanna add this coal generator from RF Tools Power Base. It needs a machine frame, which needs some blue dye, which we can make from some lapis. And we'll just make one of these. Our old tree farm area right here is gonna be a great first little spot for our power area. So once again, through the magic of editing, our new mechanism area. Let's go check it out. This back wall here is just sort of decoration. It's really this checkerboard teeter-tatter pattern here that is important. What we want to have happen, we want to put our heat generator like this. This is the mechanism port. You'll see this in almost all of the mechanism parts. And this is where cables go. We're going to place a block in front of our heat generator. And next we need some lava. Lava, as we know, is over there. With the fluid tank in hand, we want to shift and scroll 
and it'll change from bucket mode on and off. Bucket mode on means this works like a bucket now. The first click will set this item to you, and now subsequent clicks will fill it up. This holds 32 buckets worth of stuff. We're filling up, we're at 25, 26. And there we go, 32 out of 32. Let's go back home. Now with our lava in hand, we wanna go on top of the heat generator and we can simply pour our first little thing of lava. It's gonna go down on the sides. The heat generator is working. It's slowly filling up. It's taking the heat from the lava and converting it into energy. You can remove this block and there we go. Perfectly safe lava area, as long as we don't touch it, generating heat power for us. Now the reason this pattern is important is because if I make two more heat generators, you can place one right here and one right here, and they will also grab the heat from this lava. Again, if we do cable and cable, and block and block. This cable could also be a regular block. You don't have to have cables right now. You just wanna have two blocks like this. And we want something like a slab here to prevent the lava from coming down. We can do the same little trick. And there we go. We can remove this block and this bottom one and do the same thing over here. This our other lava. Just for safety's sake, I'm gonna outline this in glass. I also think it's a cool little decoration. Also make some glass slabs to put on top. Great, nice and covered. We can take our first metallurgic infuser and place it just like that. You'll see those cables connect right up through and this has our power. One thing we can do too is if we get rid of these glass blocks, we can place more cables and now all the power is shared. This machine will never run out of power. We don't need our lava bucket anymore so we can scroll and turn bucket mode off and now it's just a block. It can be placed like any other. This is a fluid port. Green is for energy. This and brown color is for fluids. I'm gonna make two more metallurgic infusers. We're gonna grab as much redstone dust as we have, as well as a stack of coal and some iron. You can actually place these guys on the left and on the right side of the ones that we have, and they will automatically connect through like that. Now what happens? Well, we can take a single piece of coal and put it here. It's gonna eat it. It, didn't, it doesn't see much, but now it says, hey, 10 carbon has moved into here. Yellow box is for the fuel, which is different than power. Power is needed to operate the machine. Fuel is needed to convert items. We can take our item. It's gonna spend that carbon, turn our iron ingot into enriched iron. And now you'll see we have no more carbon in the tank. If we place this in here, nothing's gonna happen. We have power, but nothing's happening. We need a resource to burn. We can dump another piece of coal. It's gonna eat it. There we go. We've converted our enriched iron into steel dust. Steel dust can now be smelted into regular steel. One thing we want is an enrichment chamber, which we need these basic control circuits, which is redstone. Redstone goes in as the fuel, osmium goes in. It gives us two control units. We should also make an energized smelter. So we're gonna need four control units, which means four pieces of osmium and and four pieces of redstone. We needed eight pieces of redstone, not four, but there we go, our four basic control circuits. Let's go and make ourselves an enrichment chamber, which needs a steel casing, so we need some steel. One more steel casing will let us make the energized smelter. We're gonna put the enrichment chamber here and our smelter over here. They will both fill up with power and the enrichment chamber enriches. It'll take our redstone dust. And do you have a guess what it will turn it into? Boom, enriched redstone. Do the same thing to our coal. Now this will also work on diamonds. We have a little bit of carbon in here. Remember how we only got 10 carbon for the coal the first time? Now we put our enriched carbon in, boom! We gained 80 carbon from that. It's an eight times increase if you put it in this enrichment chamber. We'll put redstone in here. Now if you look at things like our wind generator, it requires these energy tablets and some of these infused alloy, which is redstone and iron. We will need five of them and one more basic control circuit. The energized smelter uses electricity to smelt items instead of a fuel source like coal. We can also make our wind generator now, but we need some gold to do that. And I think we're completely out. Good thing we made our ingot melter. Just melt down all of our gold parts and start making some gold ingots. Great, we got our gold. We need two of these and that's it. A wind generator. Now this works the same way as our other generators. And in fact, we can put it 
just like this, except we want it to face the other way. Boom, and it'll connect, it'll spin right through. It's gonna slowly fill up with power. Now we're generating 80 KFE energy. We got 64, 64, and 64. So we have so much energy. We're gonna need a ton more later, but for now, this works. I'm also gonna place this coal generator down and it uses its own type of energy. We'll put one piece of coal, it's gonna fill up and we will continue to let it do so. Now, ideally, we would make a wireless charger. We need one ender pearl, which I don't have. Although, how bad would it be to get one? Probably not too bad, it's just a single ender pearl. All right, maybe not. Not wither, enderman. Found our first way portal, that's cool. Oh, hey, a slime nest. Definitely gonna mark this on the map. And another dungeon? Well, a dungeon will certainly have some ender pearls. Yay, yay, two more, I'll take it. All right, now that we have ender pearls, we can make a single basic wireless charger. We are also gonna make our first jetpack, a wooden jetpack to be specific, which needs a leather strap, a wood capacitor, which needs three of these energy cells. Now we can make the bottom parts of the jetpack, the thruster, we need two of these. Now we can make our wooden jetpack, just like that. We'll make a stone one later. We can upgrade this. I'm gonna break this guy. I'm gonna put our wireless charger down, just like that. You'll see it's filling up. So now this jetpack, there are two ways to charge it. You can see it's already filling up because of this wireless charger. If we break this wireless charger, it'll stop filling up. But we also made this coal generator earlier. You could skip this entire mechanism step and just make a wood backpack and charge it with this coal generator. This can also go on your body, on your curios inventory slot, some of those items we did before. And now on the left hand side of the screen, you'll see we got our jetpack information. We have 20,000 energy stored, our throttles at 100%, our engine is off, and our hover capabilities are off. We just wanna check our controls and our key binds, and we wanna look for iron jetpacks. There we go. Toggle engine V, toggle hover mode G. I like to do this the other way around. I like to make engine G and hover mode H. We can also type G in our search bar and hit key and see what else is tied to G. Right now it's the curios menu, which is already on E, so we can actually remove that. There we go. Now we can press G and our engine is on. We can press H and our hover is on. These will toggle. And lastly, I'm gonna place this wireless charger down. We're gonna press G to turn on our jetpack. And now, oh, look at that. We're jetpacking up in the air, but ouch, fall damage. We still take fall damage. We are not immune to the fall damage, but we have a jetpack now, look at this. Just kind of hold space and hover around. Now we can just go from our, our base to over here really quickly, only taking a little bit of damage pretty fast and then you'll see on the left as we get close to this wireless charger it's just gonna fill our energy back up we could also turn on highlight area and see so as long as we're mostly in our mechanism area we get wireless charging it works anywhere anywhere in this box our wireless charger will work last thing we can turn hover on and now that fall damage won't happen because we won't be falling we'll be hovering down but you're gonna use way more fuel because you use fuel the entire time you're falling. We can do one last thing with our final ender pearl. And that's a thing we never got to do at the start of the episode. That is our upgrade base. Hit you for uses. We know we want this food upgrade. Let's grab it. Now we can open up our backpack. We can apply the food upgrade to it. Oh, there we go. We're already starting to eat. So now any food we have in our backpack is gonna be fed to us. Just every time we're hungry, if we have a food, boom, we're gonna eat. We no longer have to worry about eating. We can also make one final little handy guy, which is this tool belt. We'll make one of them. This goes in our Curio inventory belt slot. We can actually replace this cloud in a bottle with it. And by default, the hotkey is R. R for radial. We can insert our tools and keep them off of our bar. They're not here anymore. We can just hit R and there we go. We can extract them, we can use them, we can mine, and then we can put it back. It saves us a ton of slots. We can also upgrade the tool belt with a belt pouch. This does, however, need an anvil. Any anvil will do. We'll place our anvil down 
We want to make sure our tool belt is in our inventory. Tool belt plus a tool pouch equals a bigger tool belt. Now we can see we can fit one more item. Press R, now we can put our bow in it. Saving up all kinds of slots. We're getting ourselves a jetpack. We are definitely playing some modded Minecraft right now. I think this is a great place to call it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Next episode, we're gonna do things on the wall. We're gonna keep crossing off. We got productive bees to do. We gotta get a simulator so we can stop wasting time doing all these ender portal runs. We'll get a bee farm going so we can get like nearly infinite iron, nearly infinite osmium, nearly infinite all the things. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe. I really appreciate it. Also, leave any comments. Let me know if there's any things you guys wanna see, if there's any tasks that should be added to the wall. For now, this has been fun. I am Cheap Gravity, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.